there are two specific types of forehands that you are overlooking when you're working on your game. You're not working on these two shots enough. And if you do, you're going to take your game to the next level and you're gonna improve and have a lot more fun playing tennis. So what are those two types of forehands? Well, I'm gonna show you in today's lesson. I'd like to go over a return mistake that is made here that I see a lot of players making. It doesn't matter if you're a pro or a club player or a junior player. This mistake is made often. So I want you to watch deuce court returner. The serve is missed. So now it's a second serve. So second serve, and I want you to notice his positioning here. Now, I like that he's standing close to the baseline, just behind the baseline. I like that he's shading towards the middle because he's looking for a forehand, especially playing a lefty where the ball is probably going to slide into this area of the court more often. So this is good positioning here. Now, ball is tossed and he moves in a little bit more. Now, my issue with this is this the server is hitting a pretty big second serve. So I want you to see what happens here. I'll play it in real time so you can see the pace. So you can see he misses that return right there in the net. He's late on it. So that second serve was hit with a lot of pace. So for second serve returns, if you're playing someone with a slow second serve, then yes, you can stand in. But it's three all in the first set. The returner should know by now that this player is going to hit sliding hard second serves. And this is a fast court, by the way. So it's a fast, hard court indoors. So he should probably be actually standing back here looking for a forehand, not so, um, so close uh, on the baseline and even inside the baseline here. He's just going to be rushed on a hard serve. So the first rule of thumb is if the serve is slow, you can move in like this. But if the serve is fast, you've got to position yourself further behind the baseline. Now, we know this ball went into the net. He was late and rushed. So what I like to teach is when you're inside the baseline, you should use what's called a buggy whip finish. So you should practice hitting a buggy whip where the racket goes up a la Nadal. This allows you to be late on the return and still make it. Now I hit the hardest, fastest return of serve of my life, the 2004 US Open, excuse me, 2000, was it 2004? Uh, yes, 2004... No, 2003, excuse me. 2003 US Open, I'm playing George Bastel. He had beaten uh, Pete Sampras at Wimbledon the year before, and I'm playing him, and I'm standing in, I'm a lefty. I'm standing in even closer than this player right here. And I stand in, and I'm three feet inside the baseline, and I used a buggy whip, and I just ripped the ball back to my opponent. So you, you wanna practice when you're standing in to use a buggy whip where the racket goes above the head. He goes over the shoulder. It's too long of a finish. It's just not going to work when he's standing in and he's rushed. The other thing to consider is noticing where the ball goes. My guess is he might have been aiming in the middle. He's got If he's going to stand in, he's got to aim more cross court over here so that if he's late, maybe the ball will go here instead of late down the line. So you've got to get this ball over here cross court and you've got to use the buggy whip. All right. So to summarize, stand back further against fast second serves. Focus on using a buggy whip finish where the racket goes up in front of your in front of your head like this. All right. And make sure you aim a lot more cross court. So give yourself some room for air if you're late and you're not going to catch it. You're not going to catch it late and go down the line and miss it in the net like that. I want to talk about the power of the forehand down the line. And in this particular point we're gonna show is a time when the forehand down the line was used appropriately and a time when it wasn't used and it should have been used. Now, a lot of coaches and even players think they should go cross court. That's the percentage play. And yes, I will agree to a certain extent that is the play to go cross court for, to play percentage tennis. But if you can learn how to play down the line, your game can go to the next level. You just have to train it more. You have to train being able to change direction in practice. 
and create drills that allow you to do that. So we're gonna watch the player on the far side serving and let's watch this point and notice when he goes down the line with his forehand. So first ball down the line. See how this point's developing? He goes down the line with the backhand there. He ends up losing the point. So let's go back and I'll give you a breakdown of what I think could have been different and what I liked about that point. Okay, serve into the body. Opponent does a pretty good job of returning it back. Now, this right here, first of all, it probably could have been, it couldn't have been an approach shot. It landed short. But I love how he goes first ball forehand right there. I mean, he really stings that ball. Now, when you sting that ball, that's a serve plus one, the first shot out of the gate. He's now on offense just by going down the line. I see too many players play this ball cross court and now they're in a neutral rally. So I love that he went down the line. The mistake he made here is that this ball right here, he should have attacked and approached down the line with his backhand. And this player is not very comfortable coming to the net, so he just waits for it and resets and goes back cross court. So he made a mistake with the shot selection here, but I love the forehand down the line on the first shot. That was awesome, just didn't take advantage of it. Now, I like the down the line backhand there, and when he hits it down the line, look where he has his opponent. This should have been a down the line right here, just like he did coming out of the serve. And instead, he goes back cross court, he leaves it a little bit short, and his opponent has a great two-handed backhand and hurts him. So that's an example of how he went down the line with the backhand. Let's watch this again. The player on the far side went down the line on the backhand right here. So this is the perfect setup shot. Hit a great shot in the corner. Look at all this space he has over here. He's got to take this ball and redirect it down the line. So good that he did it, used it early in the point with the first ball forehand, but didn't take advantage with the next shot. But not good that he didn't go down the line here after he just hit a great down the line off the backhand side. So for you, what I want you to focus on is seeing, seeing if you can find more opportunities to play down the line and to attack your opponent. When you go down the line, you're still gonna play with big margins. You're not gonna miss this ball wide. So practice that forehand down the line. If you can improve your forehand return from the deuce court, assuming you're a righty, and your forehand down the line, your game is gonna skyrocket. It's that simple. And before you go today, I've got a free gift to offer you. If you wanna take your game to the next level, you wanna pick up this free membership opportunity inside Tennis Evolution. No credit cards requ required. I just want you to get access to these 21 bonus lessons valued at $567, absolutely free. Click the link in the description below or somewhere in this video. You can also watch it inside the Tennis Evolution app. Until the next lesson, I'll see you later.